Welcome to my first ever Q&A. Exactly a week ago we reached 5000 subscribers. I would have never thought that I would have achieved this at all, let alone in only 8 months of YouTubing. For 5000 subscribers I have asked you all to send in questions and in this video I will answer every one of them I have seen. So let's dive in. What inspired you to start making alternate history content after releasing your initial what if all this response video? Well, after my response video took off beyond anything I could have ever imagined, I knew I had to try to actually make this channel work out. I started off trying many different things, showing off research I had done, courses I had taken, making more response videos and trying to make general history videos. The problem was that there were plenty of channels covering these subjects in a better way than I ever could at the start of my channel, with my laptop microphone and my videos quite literally being made via PowerPoint. But with Alternate History Hub barely uploading and Muncher Z and What If Altist largely moving away from Alternate History, I decided to make that my niche to try to keep growing. It's a great niche to be in with not too much competition and it allows me to make weekly videos without ever running out of ideas. Why did you become a YouTuber? Well, it mostly happened on accident. I watched What If Altist's Borders of the 22nd Century video and I really didn't like it. I discussed this point with my friends and online, but my annoyance remained strong. Then one day I was commuting from my university to home, about a one and a half hour trip, so I decided, just as a personal exercise, to watch the video again and write down my criticisms. When I got home I realized that I had pretty much accidentally created an outline for a script. I decided to actually put it to video, assuming that the video wouldn't perform well and my YouTube career would end right there. Instead, the video exploded and suddenly I had just under 800 subscribers and about 50,000 views and I knew I had to try to actually make it work. So here I am. If you had to live in one of your scenarios, what would your first and last choices be? It's a difficult question to answer for me since by this point I have made at least 50 scenarios. My first choice may just be one of the scenarios where I allowed the Germans to be defeated before World War II even began either by stopping them in 1935 or 1938. The scenario I would least like to live in would probably have to be one where Britain makes peace in 1940 or where America joins the Axis and the Germans and the Americans divide the world. Both of these scenarios would see massive atrocities and the free world would be extremely small. What is your favorite scenario or alternate history video you have made? My favorite one is probably what if Charlemagne could mind control? It never really got much traction in the algorithm, which makes sense as it's a bit out there, but I think it's one of my most creative scenarios and it shows off my goal with alternate history, which is trying to be more creative and expanding what is out there instead of just rehashing the same old scenarios again and again and again. Are there any videos that you've made that you don't like? Oh yeah, absolutely, most of them. As many earlier fans may have noticed, I have remade a lot of my earlier videos and I've taken down about 40 videos at this point just because I consider them subpar to my current quality. I'm very proud of the quality of my channel today, but it took me a long time and help from this channel, E4 Ericon, to get there. Every single month, I try to change something to improve my script writing, audio, video or thumbnail quality. So every month, I start slightly disliking my previous videos more and more which are lacking these improvements. What are your plans for next year? My current plans for next year are just to keep going and ensure that I don't get a burnout. I have been extremely busy the past few months. I've started a new job as a cook, which I do three to five days a week, while also studying at university for two days a week, excluding the work I have to do at home. I have an active social life, both in my hometown and in the city in which I study. And through all that, I have been mostly managing to make one video a week all on my own, all of which is very time consuming and tiring. So for now, there aren't any big plans for next year, just trying to continue to make that weekly video. One thing I am planning to experiment more with next year is my new series, Future Predictions, where I try to write alternate history while severely limiting my power of hindsight. I think it's a very novel concept, at least for the YouTube alternate history sphere, so I think it can really go someplace. What are some general rules for suggested scenarios that you would not consider? Well, there is very little that I wouldn't at least consider, but I do try to shy away from too controversial, too contested or too modern topics. For example, many people have suggested that I make an alt hist about Trump succeeding on January 6th. But this is still so close to the modern day, we don't even know what happens in our timeline, let alone in an alternate one. And it's very politically charged as well. It's generally these types of scenarios that I will not consider. 
What programs do you use to make your videos? Well, at the start of my channel, as mentioned before, I used to use PowerPoint. This resulted in pretty terrible quality. So I now use Audacity to record my audio and DaVinci Resolve to make the video. Both are completely free and are great programs which I would absolutely recommend to any aspiring YouTuber. What part of the video making progress takes the longest? I consider the making of a video to have three main parts. The first is writing the script, which takes me maybe two hours. Then there is building the video, collecting images, going through the script a second time, and putting what images I want to use into the script for future reference. Oh yeah, and making the maps I actually want to show. This takes by far the longest time, and I think this progress easily takes up about four to six hours. And apart from making the maps, which is something that I do really like, it's also by far the most boring part. Which is why I have been using a lot of maps in my videos recently. Then the final part of the video making process is just recording the audio and putting the prepared images on them, which generally takes about 1-2 to two hours. Would you consider doing collabs with other alternatives for YouTubers? I absolutely would, but I do think it's a tough thing to consider. Making a collab means endorsing the other channel. This means that there are channels that I would not want to work with just because I don't consider their content good or unbiased enough. But also, and this may sound selfish, but it is something you have to consider as a YouTuber, it's difficult to find channels where a collab would be mutually beneficial. Me collabing with a smaller YouTuber would barely give me growth, while larger YouTubers wouldn't want to collab with me since it barely gives them growth. In a purely business view of looking at collabs, they are barely worth it in terms of the engagement you give each other, unless a larger channel just wants to help a smaller channel out. What are some things you didn't know originally you were going to need to do when making YouTube videos? Well, if I'm being completely honest, it's actually making good videos. Of all the different aspects of my channel, I think my scripts have mostly remained of the same quality, but my videos have skyrocketed in quality over the past 7 months. For newer fans this may sound unthinkable, but when I started my videos only had about 6 different images across an entire 20 minute video. This was great for me starting off doing YouTube for fun, since I mostly just liked making map and scripts, and with this method I barely had to do any editing or anything of the kind. I could make a lot of content very quickly, since I am a very fast writer when it comes to scripts, but viewership, audience retention and growth were very low, since they simply weren't very appealing videos. It took quite a while before I started to actually play the YouTube game in terms of my content, editing my audio, putting background music on, and ensuring that a lot of different videos are seen at the first 30 seconds of a video to ensure that people don't immediately click off. When did you start taking an active interest in alternate history? Probably somewhere around high school. I forget which specific video or channel I watched, but I would put my money on it being a World War II video by What If Alt Hist. From that point onward, I was hooked. But I never really got deep into the alternate history sphere. I mostly just watched Alternate History Hub, Muncher Z and What If Alt Hist. What do you think are the most overused alternate history scenarios? Probably, and sadly I do contribute to this, World War II scenarios, specifically Axis victory scenarios. It makes a lot of sense that the Second World War receives by far the most interest from especially casual viewers, but it would be nice to go for a lot more diversity. The problem is that World War II really does pull higher numbers in general, so for content creators it makes a lot of sense to just focus on World War II to get the easy viewing growth. What do you think of the Sino-Soviet Union? I like the concept, but I don't think it could have ever worked out. With there being three times as many Chinese and Soviets, not to mention the many nationalities within the Soviet Union, the balance of power within the Union would be completely off right off the bat. Either China gets arbitrarily held back within the Union, leading to discontent and the Chinese splitting off eventually, or the Chinese do get developed within the Union, and the Chinese portion of the Union is now way more powerful than the Soviet portion. Again, throwing the internal balance of power off completely. But just seeing the super state on the map? Man, big fan. What is your favorite historical period, and what do you find interesting about that period? I think my favorite historical period is a toss-up between the early modern era, from about the Thirty Years' War until Napoleon, or the period from after Napoleon until the First World War. I really dislike the randomness that comes with the feudal monarchies, especially for alternate history, where the death of a single person can change the course of history, and these later periods still have monarchs, but much of this randomness is stripped away as the nobility plays a lesser role and the kings are slowly becoming less influential. Adding to this, these periods have some of the most rapid changes in history. 
nations are formed, epic rivalries are fought, ideology becomes a very interesting and influential influence, etc. What got you into history and why? Well, I used to play a lot of Risk. Not with other people, just by myself, setting up the board, making factions and role-playing the different factions fighting each other. This led to my family assuming that I really liked history, which I didn't necessarily do yet, I just liked the storytelling I could create, the organization and the maps. But then for one of my birthdays as a young lad, I got some history books from my grandparents. It was the Reader's Digest series on world history. These books were by no means meant for a kid my age, but they were so good at telling history as a grand story, complete with a lot of maps to keep my interests. I must have read this series of books tens of times, making me quite a little expert in the period from the Enlightenment until about 1900, which is probably why this is my favorite historical period as well. Who is your favorite historical person? I think it would have to be Alcibiades. Alcibiades was an Athenian general who really wanted to expand Athens into Sicily. He planned and was supposed to lead an expedition to Sicily, but before departing some holy structures got vandalized, which signified bad luck. Alcibiades was accused of trying to sabotage the operation, despite being the one advocating and leading it. And so he defected to Sparta to prevent persecution. Here he became a top advisor to one of the Spartan kings, leading many Spartan campaigns against Athens. However, he may have slept with the wife of this Spartan king, leading him to defecting again to Persia this time. After being a Persian advisor for a while, he was forgiven by Athens, so he came back to serve Athens again. I just love the roller coaster of a life this guy must have lived. What is your daily routine? Well, it differs greatly from day to day. But I try to wake up consistently around 9 o'clock, assuming that I don't have to wake up earlier. I get out of bed, I make some breakfast and coffee, and I relax on the couch for about half an hour, playing chess or watching some content. Then my day really starts, which usually means turning on my PC, checking on the status of my channel, and then getting to work on either school or the channel itself. In between this work, I relax by playing some video games. Then on most days, around 1 o'clock, I have to depart for either my work as a cook or a course at uni. If it's work, I'm gone between around 2 and 11 o'clock, and when I come home, I relax for a while and then try to sleep. If I go to uni, I'm gone from 2 to 7 o'clock, but after the classes end, I usually end up going someplace with my friends. What are your most and least favorite tropes in alternate history? I think that the one that has to be my least favorite is the ease with which alternate history sometimes allowed Germany to win World War II. I really think that following their initial offensives, the Germans were in a terrible spot. You can start bending reality and really changing stuff to allow the Germans to win, but many alternate histories seem to think that the Germans taking a slightly different course would suddenly lead to a German victory. For example, if only the Germans had taken Moscow, they would have won. If only the Germans had put back D-Day, they would have won. If only Germany hadn't attacked the Americans, they would have won. Etc, etc. My most favorite trope is any time a new massive state is formed. I really dislike small states, so any trope that merges more nations together and creates larger states is a big thumbs up for me. What kind of music do you like, and have you heard the Latin version of Little Dark Age? I hadn't heard of the Latin version of Little Dark Age until making this video. I like it a bit, but I personally really prioritize the lyrics and voice when listening to music, so if I can't understand what is being said, it really does take away from my enjoyment. Apart from that, during the lockdowns I have decided to explore the music scene. To this end, I have made this gigantic Excel file where I listen to and rate music. I have since listened to just about everything from Taylor Swift to Bob Dylan, and my music taste is extremely large as a result. Sometimes I listen to pop, sometimes rock, sometimes rap, sometimes whatever Tom Waits is doing. My two favorite artists at the moment are Bob Dylan and Nick Cave, but it changes weekly what artists or songs I have on repeat. What is your favorite alternate history scenario to theorize about? Well, I don't really know. Unless specifically asked, I don't really think about the same scenario more than once. I suppose my favorite alternate history scenario types to theorize about would be the ones that haven't really been done before, or at least not to my knowledge. These would include things like Charlemagne having mind control, or the darkness killing humans. What are your favorite works of alternate history? I don't really know. Like I said, I haven't dove deep into alternate history beyond the big three YouTube channels. While I have watched a ton of their content, there isn't really any of their videos that have stuck to me now years later. What is your opinion on philosophy? I like philosophy, and I know quite a bit of the fundamentals, I would say, but I don't know any of the background behind any of it. 
As a general rule, I don't know any specific schools or authors of philosophy. And I don't think it's useful to be like, well, as you know, author number 5 said this, so dot dot dot. I think that relies too much on the fallacy of authority. I think in history, philosophy and pretty much everything else, the arguments should stand on themselves and not rely on what influential philosopher said what. And I do think that this argument of authority is very natural to the world's philosophy. What do you think of What If Altist? As should be clear, I used to love the guy. I've been a fan of his channel for at least 8 years now. Sadly, I think that the direction his channel and his ideology have taken in recent years is a bad one. His recent takes on history, politics and geopolitics are in my opinion mostly wrong, as people who have seen my response videos will know. And I think he has put himself on the backbench a bit too much. A lot of his talking points are directly taken from other YouTubers or scientists like Peter Turchin. There is no video where he doesn't say something along the lines of and the genius historian X said this. While I very much appreciate the fact that he is honest about him not attempting to claim the take as his own, I just don't think that his content is fully his anymore. Ever since his, we're going to have another Great Depression video, I have lost a lot of interest in his channel, only watching a couple of his videos and disagreeing with many, but I still liked him for the most part. Only after his, explaining the borders of the 22nd century video, would I stop calling myself a fan. I think Rootyard has a lot of potential, and I hope that his channel takes a turn for the better again in the near future. If you could make one change in history, what would it be? That is a tough one. It has always bugged me how Europe is divided in small and insignificant states, while there are giants like India, China and the US. I think it would have been very interesting to have a world where Napoleon had managed to unify Europe. Maybe Spain doesn't turn into a train wreck, and Russia abides by the continental system, leading to an uneasy standstill between France and Britain. Could Napoleon have managed to create a system that could have more permanently kept at least large parts of Europe united in a for the time relatively liberal society? What alternate history books have you read? Quite literally, none. Since alternate history relates a lot to our understanding of history, which historical misconception do you think produces the worst alternate history? I would have to pick History Repeats. Sure, when a scenario is comparable, it is obviously possible to see similar results, but in no way does history actually repeat. When making a scenario, I try to identify all the pieces on the board needed for an analysis, and then start seeing where it leads naturally. When uncertainty presents itself and I cannot make an educated guess anymore, I try to mention that clearly in the video, and end the video or be open that the conclusion to the video is mere speculation. But I have seen scenarios in which, when a bit of uncertainty arises, it is simply stated that, well, historically, this and that happens, so that seems likely. Which I find very reductive for how largely unique most historical situations are. What university do you go to? I'm currently enrolled as a fourth year history bachelor at the Rotboud University in Nijmegen. Will the UK survive the next 10 years? I think it could go either way, but I have a gut feeling that the UK will survive. Truth is, unless things really go south in the UK, even faster than they are going now, only just about 50% of Scots really want independence. But the road to this seems very hard to achieve. Most Scots aren't willing to do much to actually achieve this independence, and without a clear road to independence, most Scots that want to leave will simply vote the SNP in and see what happens. Now that a new referendum is blocked, it seems that the next general election in the UK will be a decisive moment. The amount of votes that the SNP gets and whether or not they manage to hold a new legal referendum will determine what happens. But I think that as long as Westminster continues to oppose the Scottish secession, most Scots will not care too much to achieve independence and the UK will remain. Do you believe that Europe will become a dominant power again? I disagree with the very notion that Europe at the moment isn't a dominant power somehow. Dominant powers come in more shapes and sizes than just look at my military. Europe is perhaps the most important consumer market in the world. The only market that's larger is the US, but the US doesn't regulate their market nearly as much, leading to the Brussels effect. Whatever the EU sets as a standard, the rest of the world practically automatically follows, since if a company needs to adhere to a standard in the massive market of the EU, it might as well standardize them across the world. This, in itself, leads to, in my opinion, the EU being a dominant economic power in world politics. But even apart from that, the EU is still massively influential in its surrounding states. While direct conflict may be difficult for Europe to deal with, 
its soft influence in places around the Mediterranean and Eastern Europe is still great. All in all, I would most certainly say that by virtue of economic and diplomatic power, Europe is definitely still a dominant power only behind China and the US. Where are you from? I am a proud Dutchman, as many of you have already correctly guessed in the comments. I would like to think that my Dutch accent has gotten less severe as my channel has progressed, but I do still get weekly comments asking me if I'm Dutch. What is your favorite national anthem and which military has the best uniforms? I don't really know too many national anthems, if I'm going to be honest. The Dutch one is pretty cool, but I might be biased there. The USSR one is great too, but I think it has been ruined by memes. In terms of military uniforms, and I assume historical ones are allowed as well, probably the French military costumes of just before and during World War I. Bright red pants with a nice blue jacket. There is no excuse to not look absolutely dashing before marching into combat, and until World War I, the French realized that. How old are you? I am currently 21 years old. What is your favorite film? I really don't know. I generally don't take the time to sit down and watch a movie. I mostly just watch movies as background sounds. But I'm not just gonna put great movies on on the background, since I actually want to watch them sometime. This leads to me barely watching any good movies, instead just putting on things like rom-coms and the like. Some movies I really like are Top Gun, Rocky, Star Wars, apart from the sequels, the MCU up to like Endgame, Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, Lord of the Rings, Tarantino stuff and Mission Impossible. And I think that's every single question that has been sent in to me. Thank you all for asking these questions and more importantly, thank you all for supporting the channel and getting me to these 5000 subscribers. Like I said at the start of the video, this is far more than I would have ever thought to have achieved and the channel growth doesn't seem to be stopping down anytime soon. Thank you all for watching my channel, thank you all for subscribing to my channel and thank you all for every single like and comment you leave on my channel, which really does help me grow. I'm going to end the video here, and I hope to see you all again on Saturday, where I have another video planned for you. Goodbye.